Hey, it's Joe Glines from The Automator, and you're going to watch a video here where it's just Denelson from Brazil and Isaiah from the Dominican Republic, and we're all just kind of doing some auto hockey stuff. So we touch on FFmpeg and having a file that doesn't install and keeping the path to it. And then Denelson brought up an interesting thing he's working on, how to, and the example's in Excel, but he's not using Calm to do the stuff with it, so don't get caught up in that. It was basically nesting an object and doing a multi-dimensional thing in one loop. And so Isaiah adapts his code to, to step both down and over. But this could have been solved with doing a two-dimensional array and then dumping it all at once. But the point wasn't to do it in Excel. The point was just to understand how to get where he wanted to go using one loop. So hope you enjoy the video. Please like it. I really appreciate it. Cheers. Mm -hmm. We all know with FFmpeg, there is no quote-unquote installing of it. It's just an executable, right? right? And what I was having problems with was you've seen how I break up my FFmpeg stuff into different scripts and just here's one for ripping the MP3 files out of here's one for, you know, processing it to clean up. Here's one for, remember we made the one for adjusting the volume in mass. Yeah, I remember. So, <laughs> you just grab a few, a few of those videos and you just yeah. put a specific volume to them. Yeah. So the problem was because of where I stored FFmpeg, it was, I was having five or six versions of it on my computer. And some of them were newer than others. And it was just really like, oh, my God, you know, how am I going to There's a difference, yeah. Especially the, the process one, because it uses the newest one allows you the H.265 encoder. And okay. so I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah um, like, but, I want to do that, but yeah. <laughs> you don't have the file. <laughs> right. And Well, and then you get confused on where to – so – I realized there are certain programs like this that don't have installs, but I want to have an easy way to, to get that path to the file. So okay. I put a, a function in my library folder called program paths, and then I just go in and say, hey, you know what? This on my computer, this is the path to whatever program, right? Okay. And so when you call it with the name like here, if you call it with the name FFmpeg, it's going to return that path as the value. That's what it returns, right? And so, okay. So I just basically call this function in my program, um, and, and then we just call that specific yeah. path for that right. specific program. Yeah. So that's how I started. just uh, a question. Um, sure. When do we, we use this this kind of static variable? What is the difference between the, the common common variable like global, local? Yeah. I think I used it here used. because if it's already been called, I don't have to call it again. It, it'll keep it in memory and not even have to do the lookup, I think was my logic. Yeah, the static the static um, variables is loaded once. Um, if you use a local or global variable, um, it depends whether, for example, the global ones at least, if the program is running, it will always stay in the program's memory, right? Um, but it can be modified by any other process, right? Because it's in the global space for that. But, but I mean, in the in the script, right? So any other part of the script might modify that variable. There's the risk of that. If you do a static variable inside a function, other parts of your script cannot access it that easily. And it is loaded once. It is loaded even before the script is running. Oh. So it is loaded once, it is always there, and it is one of the first things that get, gets loaded on the script. But I might actually point you to something else, yep. uh, Joe. So, and I'm not really sure, uh, well, I'm not really sure how you would do this, but you know that Windows solved that particular issue that you're having by having a variable called path. Mm -hmm. It is an, is a global, I don't sure. know if that's yeah. what he's referring to, right? Oh, I understand. So he's referring yeah. to the, to the global path in which you actually put the path of your, of your program or script in there. You appended and then all the other environment, you know, could call that particular script. It doesn't matter where it is. It, you just, Right. name it without a path and it would actually run i don't know if you have actually tried that one no well i haven't tried it because i don't like it um <laughs> you don't I'm like it. it it's that every time you add more and more and more to that path now mm -hmm. everything is always looking in all these places 
And the second one is if I give this to someone else, I'm editing their pat. You know what I mean? I'm telling them oh, right, go yeah, edit. I'm true. like, you yeah, know, I, I don't want to mess you with that. Actually messing with their path right. uh, environment. Now, right. I think you can set up a variable that I don't, because for example, you see the Arrowhead key accesses those environmental variables. Yeah. You can actually set a variable like that. You do not have yeah. to actually modify, yeah, modify I, the Yeah, and path, I've done that. Right? Yeah. All with, right. Okay. With site, um, I have a site home variable and, mm -hmm. and it reads it. You're right. So uh, that's right. Another, so, so basically, basically no. you would just um, download it and put that path into that variable which is not their path variable right right, right. which and it would just be a variable just for that script yeah to whenever you actually for any of your scripts to right. be able to reference that exact location all the yeah. time that might be a solution for yeah. that you know? well the second one which now that you say that is hey i wouldn't mind just creating my own registry um the hell the key okay. yeah, yeah yeah exactly and, and saying okay here i'm going to put my references and, and it's not a lot and that way it's done once instead of in here but right. um anyway these are all like we said these are all and and Denelson, that was a good question of like why the hell are you using you know static like, <laughs> yeah, like, 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 yeah. Right. um yeah. Thank this you, was man. yeah this was also because this way i can keep it with my file it's a auto hockey thing and it's like hey you know what it's anyone familiar with auto hockey is easily i think going to understand anyone used to functions is going to understand what i'm doing here but um, but yeah, right. that's, this is what I was doing. So what I needed to do was to come back in here. And so I was just showing him, I think it's this, no one. There we go. So um, this is Tidbit. Tidbit's working on the progress bar for FFmpeg on a given video. And so I was just live going to demo it for him, but I realized I had to first convert this yeah, over so <laughs> yeah so we'll work on mine um i right. think actually i don't know what the hell that's doing let's just let's just go ahead and launch this oh and okay, it looks like it's go. look at that look at that so it's that getting yeah this is an earlier it. version of it now that i look at it mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you get the idea it's it right. is telling getting input from where ffmpeg is on it Actually, no. the point is, is that from the output? So because well, <clears throat> FFmpeg is actually outputting to the command prompt, right? To the to the standard output. You can actually read it from there, right? Is well, that what he's doing? Well, Zayas, that's what I was going to tell you is it's so funny. Was remember, <laughs> this is like a year ago where I said, right. hey, I have this article where I have 17, oh, I'm sorry, I have 18 ways to connect to programs, right? Because at right. the time I had standard out in that list. And remember you and I sat there and I'm we like, we're talking about it. Right? How can we use yeah. this? And both of us were like, I just don't see how this will be used. And so I removed it. And, that, and then it was like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, here's that. finally an example where- Here's an, a very good oh. example of when you would need, uh, because we were saying like um, those uh, programs that write to the standard output are usually old programs that right. are not used anymore right. because the new ones use a GUI, right? No. FFmpeg is a very specific tool. And I think all those tools like are, that are like that, you remember Image Magic or something like that? Yeah. Um, that is for modifying images. Right. Um, they all write to the standard output. So if you could actually latch onto that, you can grab their output without having to actually do crazy deal stuff. with it, right? Like, yeah, yeah, like deal right. with it. No. <laughs> but here it is. You know, you're getting that. You're getting the the frames, the current frames. Right. You would need to know what the total frames are, yeah. and we have a way to that. Do. Yeah. Right. He if you do that, that. Yep. yeah. If you have that, you already have a you have a right. the way how to work with a progress bar. That's it. So yeah. So um. I thought it was this one, and, and I'll just I'll go look later. But did, Denelson, have you played with the standard out at all? Do you know even know? I didn't know what it was, and I I can't remember if it was Isaiah or if it was Tank. One of the two. I'm like, no, it was Chad Maestrieth. Maestrieth yeah. and I. And I'm like, explain this to me. And he had like a high level kind of, but yeah, have you ever played with it, Denelson? Sorry, what's what's the program? The the standard out. So. On, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Isaiah, like virtually any program, especially, I think any program at all from Windows, and no matter where you're launching it, 
it has this, it's kind of the, you know how DOS still is a thing in Windows? I mean, there's still this environment where you can see stuff from DOS. It's this, I don't want to say default. There's a way you can get, uh, connect to a running program and look at and get feedback from it, right? And depending, of course, what that program is doing, it will at times send stuff. I kind of think it like a, a hidden status bar is the way I think of it in my head of like, it'll, of, yeah. it'll update information there. Right. And if you can go read that and pull it, suddenly you can you can see crap that you never would have guessed you could have seen. Right, it's true. That's exactly it. Uh, that's one way of looking at it. Yeah, right, but yeah, this, that's, yeah. It's a non Yep. Right. The standard out and the standard error, those are two, um, think of it as common files that any program can write into. Okay. Now, if you open CMD, the command prompt, in this black screen, what you're looking at in the command prompt is actually the standard out. Because when you type something, for example, the dir command, it actually sends information to the standard out and the command prompt actually looks at it, right? You can actually, right here, when you type any command, what you're looking at is the output of a command. Mm. The funny thing is that any program can write to the standard out. Any program can do that. The only thing is that DOS is actually built around it, right? So you are looking at the standard output all the time. Um, <clears throat> So if your program writes to the standard out, the command prompt can actually capture it and look at it. But the same way, any other program can look at the standard output. Same with the standard error. If your program has an error, the common thing is to send an error to the standard error output so that any other program can see that there was an error. That's the idea behind it. But, um, and that's just kind of like a generalization of what is going on in there. But uh, if you have, yeah, this there, this is the one, standard out to var is a, is a function that you can use to actually read from the standard output. Um, but you have to connect to it first, right? Is that, is that what you had to do, right? I, you, you know, I haven't connect. looked at this code because that was, when when Denelson pointed out the the problem with the loop and the way it was, and I'm like, yeah, trust me, I'm aware of it, but the solution is not simple. So here it is, yeah, create a pipe. That that pipe that you're creating there in, on line four, um, that is kind of like a special file, which is the standard output place, um, and you get a handle for it. That's what happens. So you get the okay. you you connect to it, and that's and there there are the two standard you have the standard output and the standard error, right? So those are the two that I was mentioning. Yep. Um, and basically when, you're, uh, when your program has an error, you should actually output there in general cool. so that other programs know that there was an issue with that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Did that make sense, Denelson? Yeah, yeah, it does. At least at a high level, right? I mean, it's yeah, just, that's, it's just <laughs> yeah. a generalization, right? <laughs> it's not right. like very detailed on it. So... FFmpeg is writing to the standard output. What Titbit's program is doing is actually connecting to that particular standard output and grabbing whatever it is writing. So if we can get that, of course, we can actually go ahead and check the status of it, see where it is at, and other things. So basically, it is very good that he's doing that. Yeah, it's it, – anyway, it was, a, it was a fun thing that – um. Like I said, I'm like, I, he when he actually said like this took me longer than I thought. I'm like, oh, trust me, I I understand. It's you know, it's not simple stuff that we're working with, <laughs> right? Um, in Donaldson, have you? So, did you do? I, I know you said, and I don't know if you can share anything, but is there anything you worked on lately that's uh, fun or interesting or new or anything? Um. So. I'm try I have I have a script here that I'm trying to do something but I but I just can't. I just Is it something you I, can share? I'm just stuck. Yeah. 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 It seems it seems to be something very simple, but 
Oh God! Mm-hmm. Can I, I spend can half I my you? time on stuff just like you're like, oh, it should be something simple <laughs> and simple stuff, right? I know. It's some. It's Everything something so silly, but I just can't explain you why. Like, I'm not being able to to solve that. Is there something you can share on your screen or? Yeah. What? Just okay. a moment. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, Jean, uh, um, Isaiah's, a couple of weeks ago, Jean and I, we were, I, he was, I reached out to him for something. He was helping me answer a question. And he's like, Hey, I'm stuck on this thing. You know, can I bounce it off you? And I'm like, Well, you're a far better programmer than I am, but sure, you know, whatever. And yeah, in, a, in a couple of minutes of him talking, and I'm like, Well, wait, you do what? And he's like, Well, you do right here. And then he saw the air, like it, it, it this is what I explained to people. Even if uh, the other people aren't even programmers, just when you start talking He's to someone else, talking, right? When you uh, talk to somebody, spot things, and you're like, oh, yeah. I don't know. While he's looking for the program, um, there's this anecdote that all programmers have this bubbly head sure. figure right next yep. to the, right next to the, yep. and it's just because of that because you try to explain the bubbly head right. what the heck you're doing. And then in the end, you, you, this, this little thingy. You hear yourself. <laughs> your brain works differently when you're talking and explaining. And right. Yeah, it's, yeah. And that's why I tell people is you can't think it. You can't think the conversation. You have to verbalize it and say it. And, and suddenly, right. suddenly you, you hear it. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm an idiot. <laughs> but let's see. Um, I don't know if he's, are you sharing your screen yet? So, uh, guys, I will share my screen now. Go. Uh, not yet. Share screen. Screen. Sure. Can you see my screen? Yeah. So it's something okay. very silly. I, I was. On. I'm sorry. I cannot. Oh, now, now I can. Um. Start. It's something like. Um, I want to to put some some letters in Excel. But the question is the logic, Some, something I, I wanted to do. So I would just put play. I wanted something like this. I will press ask, just an example. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted something like A, B, then C, D, you know, okay. E, F, right. G, H. But I just, mm-hmm. just couldn't. So this right. you solution are... for this, something very idiot, you know, because if the number um, here usually change sometimes plus one, plus two, you know, <laughs> so I don't have enough for this. You know, I don't know if you guys, I will send this. I, I do understand this. your, I do understand your conundrum here. And this is the funny thing. It looks simple but it really isn't. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it should be simple to do. It's not that simple because the thing is that you're writing on a grid. So what is going on is you have two different loops. That's what is going on. One that goes to the side and one yeah. that goes down. But <laughs> here you're working with only one loop. That's why it's not working. That's why it is getting a little bit tricky. You so need a multi-dimensional to... array, right? Is basically what you're saying. Is that's the other. Oh, uh, so the, that's maybe the problem. I'm working with just one loop. One loop. When I should be working with two, loop. with two loops. You have to do one loop that goes on um, uh, to the side, right? That that is on the horizontal, that the columns, and one loop that goes on the rows. So you have one loop that is going to happen. Four times, for example, that's going to be columns A to D. Um, now, when you're in column A, you're going to give one and two. Those are the letters A and B, right? Now, once that happens, you're going to go out of the loop and it's going to jump to the next one. And then it's going to continue with it. You see what I mean? I'm yeah. Really sure. so, so this is something that it is a little bit, um, it is a simple thing, but translating it into program, you have to have experience on that. And the fact is that you're doing one loop when you have to be doing two loops. That's all. After you try to figure that one out, you're going to be good to go. You will see. <laughs> yeah, now, now it's much easier. 
to, to right. understand to to make that possible. <laughs> right. Because gonna... I don't know if it, if it is possible. It will be like a challenge to be doing this with just one loop, you know? With just one loop. Okay, so let's see. Do, do you think it, it is possible? Yes, of course. You want uh, to try? One... <laughs> I, I can try it. I can try it. I will send you this this base here. Well, the other thing I was going to ask you, I guess, most more of a thing or point out is, um, I mean, are you actually planning to do something in Excel or you're just using Excel to demonstrate what you're doing? No, it's just to demonstrate, you know, because okay, uh, when I want to, to work with Excel, I, I use a, a library, an Excel okay. library. So it's much, it's much easier. This okay. was just something like a That's challenge cool. for me. Yeah, uh, no lo 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 logic question to to improve my yeah. my program abilities. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. That's actually he's doing the the right thing here. So um, maybe if you give me control of your screen because uh, I do not. Okay. I, let me see if I have Excel in here. Let me just I, one minute. Yeah, I just wanted to, so so people who aren't familiar with this when you start doing stuff with Excel, calm is really, you know, the way you want to be better off. He's just doing it here as a um, demo, so it's, it's perfectly fine for that, right? It's, that's I, I've, I've made my own lab, Excel library. I even oh, recorded awesome. a video. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's something very simple because I made it just with functions. I will show you now. <laughs> but, are, but are you using COM to connect to it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so good. this is right. Excel tools. Cool. So it's very, it's, it's kind of confusing, Excellent. but it works well. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's okay. I That's can't good. explain you, you know. Okay, and and then okay, so hold on. You're sending you're sending the um it's actions <laughs> the actions through hold on, let me see. Because I, I only see that you have like five, ten how many how many functions do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Eight functions, but yeah. you know that that Excel has a lot of others, right? So, so are you? Is one of these functions like able to send whatever function you want about Excel, or how? Just no, the no, basic this, ones. this functions is is the basic of Excel. You know, like open up, all right, okay. open and work with uh, open um, file, open yeah. sheet, a sheet, right? And mm -hmm. we can also get a value from. Um, so mm -hmm. we can connect to our open and we can create a new one. We can write and we can save the basics. Okay, awesome. Okay, that's good. No, no, because I was going to say like, oh, if you found a way to not have to write every single oh, function, no. that's great. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 and also, I don't know if you've seen it, but I have an Excel library that has probably 40 or 50 functions. You know, mm -hmm. you can set the formatting and, you know, search for a header. Anyway, it does a lot of stuff, but it's, I'm not saying you should use it. I'm just saying you might want to borrow from it if you want to add to this, right? It's an mm -hmm. easy way to, to tweak it. But it, I'm just glad you're seeing using COM because the vast majority of people don't. And it's just like, oh, my God, it uh, is yeah. better ways. <laughs> but cool. So I have, having to use your, your Excel library, but it will be, will be yeah, check it out. Check it out. Approve. Yeah, so I just sent you a oh. control so I can oh, yeah. actually use your screen yeah. if that's possible. So you're you're wondering if it is doable to go ahead and do it in one loop. So let's try yeah. this. Um, can you comment all that out, please? So just oh yeah, it. of course. Right there we go. So let's say we're going to be doing four steps on each step i want to put two letters right so on each step i have two things to do one put the letters to go to the next column that's what i want to yeah, do right the first two letters then the right. next two letters right so and yeah and the first um, the first um so the first what I'm line do, of each column we, we need to put like the sequence one two three Right. You, so what see. I'm going to do, I'm going to send, and you're mm -hmm. trying to send the A index is what you said, right? So that's the first line. Yeah. So you put the number there, one. Then you're going to hit enter, right? Yeah. And sorry, the other way around. 
So if I hit enter, I'm going to go to down in which I'm going to send two letters, which is yeah. going to be a uh, like letter. A and mm -hmm. So letters, I'm going to have the A index. Oh, sorry. That's the first letter. That's A, right? Yeah. Because I'm well in one. So here's the deal. What happens with this approach is that after you throw the first two digits, that's one and two, yeah. which I can do with A index plus one. Yeah. Now the <clears> second <throat> row is going to be A index plus two. Then A plus one. Index that's plus, plus two one plus again. One. It's so backwards. this is this for three and four and five. So on the outside, what I want is that every time I hit those two, this number is going to be incremented by one. So A index is one plus one. Now, here's the thing. It's very confusing. <laughs> it, 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 I know what you're, what you're referring to, but there's something. I need to keep it's account. It's something so simple, you know. No, but this is the thing. I need in, to keep theory. account. Yeah. <laughs> So I have a count that later on, this number is going to be different from my looping number. That's what, yeah. that's what is going on. So you need to keep two counts, two separate counts, yeah. right? Now, this one refers to my first column here. But then the second one is going to refer to this guy here. You see that? So... What I'm going to do on the letters, I'm not going to go by A index. I actually want to go by the column number. And the column number, if it is one, then this one would be two. So that's going to be going by one. That's okay. Um, sorry. This Maybe we we'll need a second variable. I don't know. Not really. Let's see something. Because the second variable is the A index. That's the one that is actually telling me oh, where yeah. I'm at right now. It. So the A index, which is, so let's do something. The A index might be the columns that I'm referring to. That's it. So A index one is gonna give me two letters. Those two letters are gonna refer to the column which is one in this case, one, two. Now on the second one, on the second, it's gonna give me three and four. On the third one, it's gonna give me four and five. No, sorry, five and six, you see? So I know that this loop is referring to the columns. Now, how do I validate the column with these two numbers in here? Let me just one minute, which is what you were trying. Hey, what I think, Joe, Joey is, is muted. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, what I was going to say was, I think the point is, uh, is, is, which is you need to loop more than four times, right? And then you no, need no. to break. Yeah, whatever, right. whatever you, you want. The, you need to break the on count, every four you know? and increment four five. column. Right, but this is the thing. And, and, and this is the part that I, my experience tells me you cannot do this without two loops. What I'm trying to do, right, that's the point. So what I'm trying to reach us is whether you can do it with only one loop. Yeah, well, I, I still, I think you can. But my point is okay. the loop has to be more than four. The loop has to be 26. And then every right. four, For each you, letter, right. every four, you have a different counter that's going to increment your column. So index letter no hold on i think this one is in letters mm -hmm. so for the letter right so now the index would tell me one by one what they are but in one index so that's the problem because this is actually going to go one by one, but I don't want to do that. So every two steps, I would actually do 
the actions. So what I would do is every two steps. So if, and this is the interesting one, if not module um, dividend is going to be uh, a index and the divisor is going to be two. So every time a index is even, I want to do something. I thought you want to do every... the fourth, though. I'm sorry? You want to do it in the fourth, don't you? No, because I want to do A, B in one column. So it no. is every two steps. So we're doing A, B, C, D. Anyway, all right, whatever. Oh, no, no, no. So we're going to do... So let me see the example. Where is the Excel? I'm sorry. Oh, the example was... Here we go. So for each column, he had two letters. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, then you're right. That's what I understood. Yep. So in any case. I got thrown off on the four, the number four. Right. Yep. So what we're going to do is that every time A index is even, right, then we're going to do some interesting stuff, which is here. I'm going to send my A index minus one. I think it is. Ooh, sorry. Oh, okay. So that is because the keyboard is on your language. So, <laughs> yeah. How do you want us? Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So minus one, because I'm always going to be, so if I'm here is one, oh no, that's not going to work out. You see that the column number is not going to work out. Let's leave the column number for another moment. So what I do want to do is a index and Oh, sorry. A index and a index minus one. So this one here. So this one is going to send me the previous, which is going to be A. Then it's going to hit enter, and then it's going to send B. That's what is going to happen. And after it does that, I want it to go to the side. So I need to go uh, right, was it? You see, it has been a long time since I used that. So is that how you do the arrow to the right? Is that the one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Here it is. Now, why did you do up to? Okay, so that I needed to. Up to. Yeah, I have have control up to 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 get to the first um, cell. Okay, awesome. Now I'm gonna do something later here because I see that you're having some sleep in here, but I think we could just send key delays. What is called so this is this okay. happens here. Set I've put the uh, sleep to make sure that we won't have any problem, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I just put the action. set key delay here to 100, which is what you oh, did. Oh, yeah. And then every letter is going to be sent at a 100 interval. And after I do that, then I set it back to what it was. Oh, shoot. <laughs> the minus one. Oh. Uh, sorry. Here. So... I just set the option, do that, and then go back. So it's going to send letter A. So I'm going to hit enter. Letter B It's going to go to the side, go up two. And then when it repeats, it's going to do it when it is in D. It's going to send C and D. I think this should give me something similar to what you're asking. Can you try it? And uh, set key delay minus one, it, it's no delay at all, right? It, it actually grabs the default. Actually, if you go ahead and... I thought you know, the default was 10. Yeah, so if I go to... Do you have the... No. Oh, so yeah, have, can, we can. Yeah, I just... Oh, yeah. I was just going to look for it online. I usually... Um, so this delay here, if it says minus one, is no delay at all. And zero here is going to give you 10 milliseconds. You see what I mean? Yeah. So there's a difference between minus one and zero. But um, 
the default, as you mentioned, is 10 milliseconds, but that's for send event. So yeah. now in our case, we're not, give me just a minute because send. If we don't specify the send, I don't know which, which one is the, the default. This Maybe the, the just send. Right. So, so for, yeah, if you send, you send, I think the default yeah, by default. is send event, which is 10 milliseconds. Exactly. Yeah, so 10. That's okay. But in this case, we could actually just remove it, which is or minus one to no delay or zero, which is the one that set it to 10 it matters milliseconds. as possible. Right. So I would put it to zero there. Okay, good. So let's try that. Let's go ahead and save yeah. it and try it. Let's see what happens because I'm not really sure what will happen there. So now we're going to see what, well, you have to run it though. Can you run it first? Let's see. Can... <laughs> you see? Finally. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as you can tell, what is going on here is, as I mentioned, we are just... Um, now I just need you to put uh, the number of each column. And right. So that, one, so that one is a little bit more tricky because as we're looping in for each, um, for each letter, I would have yeah. to just grab the current number and divide it by two, I would assume. So that would be a index... Uh, so a index divided by two, but that's the problem because, for example, when it is, well, no, it, ugh, that's the thing. It's going to give me one. No, for two, it's going to be one. You got to, if you put it two, on the mod, what happens? Oh, it's only on that. That's oh, right. Right. It's just going to happen when the number is even. Right. And that's the issue. What Well, it's only going to give me even numbers, right? Well, no, it's going to give me. Only it's gonna only give me the odd numbers, which is not what I want. I want every single so for that I can count that's the counter here. So let's go ahead and do that. The counter is gonna be count oh sorry. Now you're cooking. Right, so we're gonna do this. Uh, yeah. That's another thing that I anno it annoyed me a lot. I'm gonna show you something, uh, Joe, yeah. about it. About mm -hmm. so, why did you go two only? Shouldn't it be three? That's interesting. Yeah, that's that's the the function of control up, you know, because it goes directly to the first cell. Oh, control up. Control yeah, up. I didn't, or down, I didn't see know. the control. Right. Yeah, yeah, I've mentioned. No, so in that case, you didn't even need the, um, right. Oh, but that's um, not going to work out right now. So, okay, let's, let's keep it. I know we, up three is going to work. The reason for it is not working is because I have a set key delay of 100. So for each key delay, it's not going to send me there. It's oh. not going to pair the control up. It's just going to do that. So, but I can do it manually like that. Now, counter here. Every time, let's make it, I'm, I'm just going to go up like this. Just increase, just increase it once. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. So the thing is that. Increase by one. So what happens is, here's the deal. Um, this is only going to happen on every time we have a, um, an even number. But the counter here yeah. is just going to be one, two, three, four, five, you see? So. I can use that. On the other hand, Joe, remember that on version one, you can increment before you use. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That right? was, check out that video, Denison. It was, it was. Right. That's a good one. I forgot about right. it. Okay. So I can do that. In version yeah. two, you can't. I don't know why. I don't know why they removed that. 
Probably so some thought, of this doesn't make sense because it is, it's just no, like. No, 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 because that is very common in almost all programming uh, languages. I think well, he hasn't coded it yet. I was, I was going to say, that's the alternative. You're right. Maybe that's, that's the other option, but I, I felt so frustrated when I was doing that. So I cannot do that right now because as I start with one, it would go to two, which is not what I want. And I think if I put a zero there, it's not going to start. Let me double check on that. Let me try that. I don't remember if it would do it. So it is running right now, I think. I don't know yeah. if you have to close a different yeah, one. Yeah, it's running. Okay. Just press ask. Hold on. So let me. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, another language is doing its thing. There we go. So you yeah, could do you it with it. one loop, right? You could do it with one loop, but you would have to understand what the mod, the module, this other thing would work, how it works. And then... Well, as it is, isn't there... A, a, I mean, it, it's still, it's a, a whole different approach, but couldn't you build a multidimensional array with the information and then just dump it? Uh, you mean like all of this? And dump it? Right. We could structure right. an object. Well. I actually could do like an a, an object that each key, say if the first key contains only the numbers from 1 to 12, uh, to 13. Right. The second key has this, the second, and then I would just send each of the keys, like each of the values well, individually, right? And I'm going to paste some stuff in the chat. Denilson, you adapt it to... Um, Grab, you, it needs the pointer for, well, I'm using, I'm leaving it in there just so you see it. I have mine, Excel colon equals, gets me the, a handle to the, the worksheet, which I, I'm assuming you have that in your function, mm -hmm. a way to connect to that worksheet. Is that right? Danielson? Sorry. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do you have a, I, you know what? I'll just paste my example in case you don't have it. And then, then you're set either way. So, um, uh, hold on. So these two, after what I just pasted, um, they look kind of crazy, but they're, um, they're my way to connect to, uh, the active running version of Excel. And if you return a one from the Excel handle, it'll connect you to the application, you know, and two, it's the workbooks and three, it's the worksheet. Um, but can you go ahead and dump that into your, into a, a separate spot on your script, the stuff I put in the chat? So that that's you then, Sunday. That's, you're the one that can do it. Yeah, because... Well, I hadn't thought about it, but I guess Isaiah could have seen the the, the Zoom chat. I see, I see the chat, but I cannot then, do anything right. about it. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't do exactly what yours was doing, but I did want to point out how you can set values programmatically. Yeah, just create a new one. Okay, so that and then and then we those are the the Excel handle um, is. The function we're going to rely, we're going to use, but maybe you have an equivalent, right? But let's just borrow mine from now and then go back above. I made a post above that. That's the actual script that, um, that Isaiah's can probably adapt it very quickly, but, um, I just wanted to demonstrate the, the letters and the Excel handle and the 4K in letters and the cells value. Do you see that? I'll repost it again. So just that is the, the actual auto hotkey code. I think I'm um, I'm kinda I'm kinda confused. <laughs> confused. No, I just pasted Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, we don't care, right? I'm um, sorry. We just pasted okay. some new code into the chat. And it says letters. Yeah, it starts with letters. Oh, so the last one? The, the last, last slide. one. Right. The last one. Just copy it. Yeah. And paste it on, on the... And uh, separate? 
No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, right there, right there. Yeah, right. right. So, yeah. okay. uh, and then you might want to lose the letters on uh, line one. I don't know if you had added that, but that's just, you know, we don't need that. Yeah, the label. Yeah, yeah, we don't need a label. So, so uh, what is going on is that he just gave you the um, code that is going to be used by this function. You see it? Right. So this function right here that he's calling needs all this. That's what happens. So yeah. this is the function itself, and that function actually gets this other function. That's why. So this two in here, you can actually just go ahead and um, kind of like put them in the back of your hand. It's, they don't matter that much. This is the code that really matters. So what he says is that this um, function is going to grab the active Excel file that you have, right? Right. And after it has it, you can actually send the cells like this to that same fun to that um uh thing so let's see how it works just go ahead and save it and run it i would actually throw a hotkey in it um and then when you're in excel hit the hotkey because you're going right, to notice just the, the hotkey difference. yeah so go ahead and save it I don't know what. So you do it. What um, I name it? Can you just save it? Just save it as a file. Whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want. Whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. now so, on line twelve, add a hotkey. Let's, let's put a hotkey right here. Just put whatever you want. So we'll trigger it. So what like, hotkey should you use? Can you put one down or so? Whatever you want. Oh, sorry, F feel free to. Oh, yeah. No, but uh, we were asking you if you want to use any type of. A hotkey. Let's what hotkey do you want to use? Control T, just because it shouldn't be used. In the control T. So, Control T. Um, can you put it? Because the thing is that your keyboard is different. Ah. So, can you put the Control T there? Control T? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the a correct. Hot key for a hotkey, right. yeah. Right. So the carrot, yeah. So let me see something. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. That one. Oh, hold on. There we go. And a return down cool. here. Okay. So what we're going to do, save it, run it, and now go to the Excel file and press Control. Oh, I would. Your I would. You should I do that one. Go back. Oh, you to, you, you, uh huh. I'd go back to Excel and just create a new worksheet so we don't do it on this one because it'll overwrite those. Not that it matters, but it'll overwrite. Oh well, you can do it there too. So just hit Control T. Oh, but I'm trying to. I, I hit New. Other oh, things that it is different. Oh, so you want so to create a uh, new sheet? Yeah. yeah, well, you can just go to a new tab. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Now, now click Control now, T. Press Control T. Control T. <laughs> Ooh. So, <laughs> so instead of sending keystrokes, hey, hit here, hit tab over, hit down, or whatever, right? It's programmatically setting those values, right? And so it's, so. it's lightning fast compared to sending keystrokes. And I don't know if you knew this. Yeah. But it's just a FYI, like that simple bit where we could, you know, easily adjust how we're moving with the cells, the locations. I just did KK just to show it, you know, it moving. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if you had used setting values that way yet in Excel, but it's super. Right, and but it is, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. cool. He has, his, his function has that, no? The, the function. I didn't see it. That's why I thought cell, I just. No? Mention it. Oh. <laughs> with I saw he had stuff with opening a file and saving it and snap. I didn't notice stuff with actual setting values, so that's why I just thought I'd throw it out there just to make sure. And and even then, even if he doesn't know, other people are going to watch this video, right? And I just yeah. whenever I see anybody, and I know that wasn't your goal here, Donaldson, so don't take it the wrong way. But when I see people using Excel and sending keystrokes. I'm like, there's, you know, calm is so much better, more efficient a way. I know that wasn't your goal, right? Is it was you were learning how to build your kind of your two dimensional matrix, right? But yeah, it's good, much faster. 
It is. Well, and when you're doing a lot, it's so much more reliable because each of those things in, in, in my method is a, a range. You know what I mean? It's a set location. There's no, and you can do it. You could be using your computer at the time. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't require you to stop what you're doing and let it run. That's right. Yeah. That's the point. And, and you can turn off updates um, and have it do all the stuff behind the scenes. And it's, it's so much, anyway, it's crazy fast. But yeah. That's cool. So uh, in any case, if you can go back to the original, the original script. So, hold on, here we go. So, quick thing, whenever you have this many sends like this, you can just always send in the same line, so long as you're not sending hotkeys as control up. If you're sending control up, that might mess up with whatever you're doing. So, the hotkeys, I would send them in their own send, but if you're sending many things at once, it's better just to have it in one line. Um, or what I, mean, I would do is I'd copy it all to the clipboard and then just paste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then here, yeah. um, the only thing that we were doing is just this modulo. Do you understand that mod? Do you set? understand what is going on in there? Yeah, yeah. I even tried to do something uh, with mod. Um, let me show you. Uh, okay. If, if we... We hit Control Z. Oops. You can see what I were trying to do. Uh, oh, good for you. Yeah, creating a backup. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> like that. Terrible. Yeah. You know, I, oh, I sometimes see it here. I do I this see it kind there, of right. Else statement, I like. Okay, was well, something right. very confusing, you know. <laughs> no, but no, you were trying to use mod. Mm -hmm. Right, I see it. I see it. So you were doing if it is, but the problem is our right here. So you have it as an equal. Okay, so if it was zero, which means that it is even, you would have the second letter. Which you see, this you you were on the right track because I had a counter outside of the loop. Remember? So you were on yeah. the right track. The only thing is that you had two different counters. You see that? And I'm not really sure what you were doing with letter one. You see that one? Where did you use that? <laughs> you didn't. So maybe yeah. <laughs> that's why it got a little bit confusing for you. And it was correct. You didn't have to have two counters. You just needed one. So you were good. Um, you were using this one here. And you were um, adding either one or two. But it's okay. I, I do see what you, your intention was. The only thing is that it wasn't... You already had to. You have the A index, which is one of the counters, and letter two, which was the second counter. That's what I was doing myself, actually. So it, yeah, it is so okay. <laughs> you had the right idea. You were very close to it, <laughs> actually. At least I, I tried. <laughs> yeah, no, you did. You were very close to it, by the way. So in yeah, the end, is... you you did. Oh, hold on. From where you were to where I am, the only difference is that I packed everything together into one line. That's the only oh, yeah. difference, right? So you, you are doing the same thing that I was doing. And with the modulus, you were actually correct. That's the one that you have to use. You were doing the modulus of prime. The reason why it got a little bit confusing is because it was all in one line. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah so, so here's the deal. Having it, that's the reason why I make a block like this, because it is easier for me to know where I'm at. But if you have everything in one line, it is difficult for you to know where you are. That's the, that's the difference. <laughs> exactly. You see, right? So, so it has its pros and cons. Is right? yes. Here, let's, let's compromise. Add line breaks with the comma. So it's all sending one line. 
but they're on separate lines. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Then it's easy to read. Right. You have to so, time. So know. this one, for example, I could do this, like, well, not commas. In this case, it would be dots because the send. Yeah, sorry. Good point. Right. Right. So it would be like this. It looks like several lines. Right. But it is actually one line. And yeah. the dot operands just, but in that case, that's one way to kind of like have everything clear for yeah. yourself yeah. about where you're at. But with the modulus, I would actually most of the time just add it as a block because that tells me if that is not true, then all of this is not going to run. When you have it in the same line, like you have the mod and then you have two different things, you don't know which one is actually running. You see what I mean? But you did. Yeah. You were actually very close to it. You did a very good job in there. And, and again, not to sound like a broken record, but this is one of those things, like when I work with, with Isaiah and with Maestrieth, Maestrieth will have these multi-dimensions in his head and build them freehand, you know, and he's doing like four levels, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And then he just dumps the whole matrix at once, not even with the pace, but he just dumps the <laughs> matrix. And it's so fast but that's part of just, I think, really, it's something programmers get better at abstract thought and, and dealing things in multi-dimensions. And once you start getting that way, it's so much more efficient programming-wise. You know, it's just, it's hard. It honestly it is. It is. It is. But cool. I'm glad we were able to work through it. Yep. Do you have any, any other questions regarding this particular um, example or you want to show something else? Mm. So what if we wanted to to have the user to choose like the, like I, I did before, you know, um, loop four or loop five, would that be possible with this, this basic you, you've done here? So you want to not loop through all the letters you just yeah, want to yeah. have a certain amount of columns yeah the, the user for example can be said okay let's see um we could add a condition about how many how many columns you want Let's put four. And if my count here, because that's the one that I only update when it, I move a, a column. So if my count is more than my columns expression, then, oh, you, you know what? I, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I'm going to tell you what's going on. That the script is actually running. That's why. It's hilarious. <laughs> and I hit escape. Control T. Oh, that's awesome. No, that's I, I, no, the escape one. Oh. So there's, yeah, so there's yeah, one of them that had the escape. Ooh, yeah. So, so he put uh, escape as a hotkey, right? right. So that, that can happen. So if my count is more than the columns, let me see if I could do this in this. Oh no, it destroys everything. It doesn't actually add the things. Um, then you would just break out of the loop. That's all. So I do want it to do number four. So my count is four. Mm. That means uh, it did one, two, three. It did four. And then after it did that, when it comes back, it will say four. It should say more or equals the amount of columns. And then you would break. So if it is more than or equals to the columns that I set in here, which I can use with a GUI, I can take that value from a GUI or whatever, yeah. then it and always never use a hotkey like that, <laughs> like like very simple <laughs> like that. Usually put a control in it just in yeah. case. That would help a little bit more. But if we go ahead and open this up, 
it should give me four. There you go. It should stop right there. Yeah. Right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it here for you. And my challenge to you is to do the same thing, but with, but with two loops, as I was explaining. Oh, you remember yeah. that? I, so with yeah. two loops, it should be easier. Actually, yeah. with two loops, it should be easier. So that would be my challenge to you. I would leave it like that. Like, okay, now you have to show me how you would do it with two loops. <laughs> nice. Okay. So you want me to try now or you, you mean like show you later? I'd say it no, can be you can, you can actually, well, you, that, that can be for, ne for next time. It's okay. Right, yeah, so you okay. don't have to do it right now, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. There's Just no me. reason to feel pressure. You know, pressure. No, no. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, it's awesome. There you go. And, and I like the idea of using Excel to help see where you are, because that's one of the things people get tripped up on and thinking they're doing something the right way. And then when you actually see it in practice, you're like, Oh, it's not, <laughs> no, it's not moving up over here. Um, but yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I think I, I brought something interesting, <laughs> very simple, but at the same time, kind of confusing that we could work on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's where, you know, it's all things. And the, and the other thing is, we could have done, I'm sure, at least four different ways to have solved this, right? Like yeah. approaches. That is right. Yeah, it's, there's no quote-unquote right answer. Um, it just depends on what you're doing. And most importantly, I know Isaiah agrees with this too, is, hey, what are you familiar with and can understand? Like, if we came up with something using a DLL call, not that we would have one, you know, and you can't edit it and manipulate it later, how good is that, right? It, like, it, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. You know, I'm not familiar with the DLL call. I never used. Yeah, you will. I don't understand yet. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you something, just as a, as, a, as a quick thing. You are very familiar with it. The thing is that you don't know it. So basically, no. you see this this send here? Yeah. It's calling a DLL. The only thing is that oh. you don't know that it is doing it. That's I all. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. is. So, uh, <laughs> so actually, we're dealing all the time with DLL. In send yeah. and post message stuff, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, auto hotkey wraps a lot of this stuff. It makes it so easy for us. And that's what I was thinking about. Of like, look, the other day I was talking about using, I use other people's functions, and often I wrap their functions. So I'm like, I don't want all this crap. I just want to change this parameter and this parameter. And then, you know, I'm like, that whole process is everything in coding because auto hotkey is wrapping stuff that Windows does. Windows, you know, is using stuff from C++. Well, C++ is actually, you know, taking words. The and zeros and ones. Right, yeah, right. And it's just, it's all abstraction removed over and over. And that's where auto hotkey puts things in like, especially version one, right? In very simple English that most people can kind of make sense of, right? And now... That's it's right. slower because it has to do more translations every time. But that is right. yeah, it's it's you know it's still uh, like I'll take that any day. But as Joe said, like this same example, we could do it in many different ways. Um, I do not even need to create a uh, right uh, an array in here. Right, I could just go over a loop. And use the character function to convert yeah, a number like to a, fu to a, to a letter. Right. I think I could just <laughs> yeah. convert a number yeah. to a letter. So I don't really like, need to create this part here. I don't really need a for loop. I could use a normal loop. Um, I could use com objects. I could do the mod. I could do two loops. It depends. You, you can do it so many ways. It just depends which one is better for you. Well, and, and I was saying what also, you want to solve. Yeah, right. creating a, a you know the matrix entirely and then just dumping it, setting it. However, not not iterating over exactly. the one time, right? Um, you know, and it sort that, of, right. that also, which is one of the things, you know, the first thing you need to understand is, I know this was an example for you just playing with, but what is the program? What is the environment you're going to use it in, right? Because that really, and also, are you building it for other people to use or is it just going to run on your computer, right? Because those yeah. things have huge effects on how you design your code. Yeah, that's true. 
And um, most of the times, whenever you code for somebody else, you have to be thinking about the unknown. If it is in your computer, you know how it works. Everything works fine. <laughs> you know, everything works fine. Your computer, I ran the code. It works. I grab that same code and try to do it on my computer and it breaks <laughs> right there. <laughs> Just because my computer is lower. That's it. <laughs> which, which, which I'll still say, and Isaiah, see if you agree with this. Auto hotkey compared to like, let's say Python or other languages, like auto hotkey because for the most part, we're connecting to Windows and using the Windows API to do stuff. It's on average, very good, you know, if you're using APIs. When you're sending keystrokes to SNAT or looking for images, especially, and you switch computers, mm-hmm. so that breaks a lot, right? But when you're using like a DLL call or the sender post messages, I mean, like it's very, it often works compared to Python and other stuff, like they have a slight different library, they have a slight different thing, and oh my god, it's it's a nightmare. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's how it goes. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, um, but thanks for hanging out here. Awesome. Thank you, guys.